Hi students, today I am going to discuss the very important unit or the topic which is very very important for any of the graduate. Either uh, uh, the graduate is the BSc or the BTEC, whatever the course is, whatever the stream is, each and every graduate needs the knowledge about which I am going to discuss today. So that particular topic, that particular unit which is required by any of the graduate, graduate irrespective of the stream, irrespective of the course, irrespective of the branch is spectroscopy. Spectroscopy. And the spectroscopy word uh, has been derived from two words. That is spectro and scopy. Spectro and scopy. Spectro stands for radiation. Whereas scopy stands for measurement. So based upon this, we can say that uh, spectroscopy is the measurement of the radiation. Spectroscopy is the measurement of the radiation. So this is the concise definition of the spectroscopy. That is measurement of radiation is spectroscopy. But it is not the actual definition or precise definition of uh, the spectroscopy. So... Before going to discuss what is the precise or actual definition of the spectroscopy, we have to discuss what is the radiation about which we are talking. Because spectroscopy is nothing but the measurement of the radiation. Now, whenever it is a measurement of the radiation, definitely we need to talk something about the radiation. What is that uh, being measured during the spectroscopy? So radiation here is electromagnetic radiation streams, electromagnetic radiation. So in order to discuss the electromagnetic radiation, first of all, we have to discuss uh, about electromagnetic waves. So what are electromagnetic waves? These are the waves in which electrical field, magnetic field, and the propagation of the wave is perpendicular. These are the radiations in which electrical field, electrical field is perpendicular to magnetic field, in turn perpendicular to the propagation of the wave. So these are electromagnetic waves. And the radiation with respect to these electromagnetic rays are called as electromagnetic radiations. So to be more precise, to be more precise, the name itself suggests that uh, these radiations possess electrical field, electrical property. They, these radiation possess the magnetic pad property. This radiation poses the electrical property because it is electro and magnetic means magnetic property. The radiations which poses electrical and magnetic property and are characterized by the wavelength, the frequency, wave number, etc. are called as electromagnetic radiations. The radiations, the radiations which poses electric property, magnetic property, Poses, poses are characterized by the frequency, wavelength and wave number are called as electromagnetic radiations. Electromagnetic radiations. Right. So here we are talking about the measurement of the radiations means we are talking about uh, the measurement of electromagnetic radiations. So here I have clearly explained what are the electromagnetic radiations. Now let us give the pause for the electromagnetic radiations. Let us give a pass for the electromagnetic radiations. Now let us discuss about uh, the precise or the actual definition of spectroscopy. Spectroscopy. Right. Now, whenever, whenever these electromagnetic radiations, because uh, these electromagnetic radiations are carrying the energy in the form of wave. These electromagnetic radiations are carrying the energy in the form of wave. When these electromagnetic radiations which are carrying the energy in of form of wave 
or energy carrying waves strikes the particle or interacts with the matter either it is a solid or the liquid then some change occur in this particular matter whenever the energy carrying waves whenever the energy carrying waves or the electromagnetic radiations interact with the matter let us say that this is the matter some changes occurs in this matter this study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter is precisely called as spectroscopy the study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter is called uh, spectroscopy now this interaction this interaction of electromagnetic radiations and the matter takes place in two ways the one is absorption and the second one is emission that is whenever the electromagnetic radiation interact with the matter interact with the matter now whatever the atoms present in the matter whatever the atoms so because the matter is comprised of the atoms right now whatever the electrons which in turn which are a part of the atom will jump from ground state to excited state ground state to excited state coming again whenever the electromagnetic radiation is incidented or interacting with the matter now whatever the atoms which are present in the matter absorb the radiation due to this absorbance whatever the electrons which are present in the atom of the matter will excite or jump from ground state to excited state so this phenomena is called as absorption this phenomena is called as absorption and the spectroscopy related to absorption phenomena is called as absorption spectroscopy absorption spectroscopy on the other hand on the other hand let us say that the atom or molecule is present in the excited state is present in the excited state when the atom or the molecule is present in the excited state now whenever the electromagnetic radiation is incidented on this particular atom or the molecule when this electromagnetic radiation is incidented on this particular atom or the molecule which is in the excited state it jump from it jumps from excited state to ground state during this jumping from excited state to ground state it emits a radiation now this phenomena is called as emission and the spectroscopy related to the emission phenomena is called as emission spectroscopy emission spectroscopy emission spectroscopy so do remember students the study of interaction of um, the electromagnetic radiation with matter is called as the spectroscopy and this interaction between the electromagnetic radiations and matter takes place in two ways the one is absorption absorption if absorption takes place then the spectroscopy is called as absorption spectroscopy on the other hand if emission of the radiation takes place then it is called as emission spectroscopy emission spectroscopy now let us see what is the purpose of this spectroscopy that is what is the importance of uh, the spectroscopy importance of the spectroscopy for example let us say that this is one of uh, the sample this duster is one of the sample now we need to find out what are the constituents or components or elements or function group present in this particular sample particular sample now what we have to do in order to find out the constituents or components or elements of the function group present in the sample in the trivial method we will do the elemental analysis on it we will do the elemental analysis of it right first step 
then we will do the functional group test on it then we will do the attachment of the atoms on it so in order to perform each and every experiment the sample requirement is more the sample requirement is more for example students let us say that a is a reactant which is reacting with the b reagent and converting into the c product a is the reactant in presence of the b reagent it is converting to c product so trivially or conventionally in order to find in order to determine the in order to determine the structure of the product which is formed by the reaction of the a reactant with the b reagent what we need to do is we have to follow each and every step we have to do the elemental analysis we have to do the functional group test we have to do the attachment test so many tests should be done now in order to carry out all those tests in order to find the constituents or components or the elements of the functional group present in the c product which has been formed here we need to obtain the c product in grams we need to obtain the c product in grams we need to obtain the c product in grams because for elemental analysis we require uh, some amount of uh, uh, this particular uh, c product for the functional group test we have to consider we have to take uh, some more amount of uh, the c product and for each and every test it consumes uh, it consumes in grams we require uh, we require the product in grams in grams in order to determine what are the constituents or components or elements or functional group present in the resulting product we need the product in grams if you go with conventional method if you go with trivial method trivial method because each and every step each and every step should be then carried out individually sir and for individual prediction the so definitely huge amount of the product we need so huge amount of the product is being consumed huge amount of the product is being consumed during the trivial or conventional method of structure elucidation means what conventional or trivial method of structure elucidation is not the economical process so since it is not the economical process definitely we have to go with the, the economical process and that economical process by which we can simply or easily determine the structure of even the macromolecule is spectroscopy and in the case of spectroscopy in the case of spectroscopy in order to determine the constituents or components or elements or functional groups present in the product we need a pinch of the sample a pinch means we need the product in micrograms if the product is formed in micrograms also we can analyze we can determine we can elucidate the structure of the resulting product so that is the importance of spectroscopy students so spectroscopy is helpful to determine the structure of unknown molecules unknown molecules it also gives the information about the structure of uh, macromolecules molecules as well what are the constants present what are the components present what are the elements present what are the functional present in each and every sample each and every molecule each and every compound can be determined with the help of spectroscopy making use of a pinch of the sample which is not possible in the case of trivial or conventional method in the case of trivial or conventional method we need to consider we need to obtain the product in grams because in the trivial or conventional method 
we have to carry out n number of tests and for carrying out the n number of tests we require the product in grams but in the case of uh, spectroscopy we in order to determine the structure of the molecule in order to determine the structure of the macromolecule whatever the molecule is we need uh, we need or require the sample in micrograms so grams to micrograms right so students spectroscopy is especially used for determining the structure of unknown sample unknown sample and it is economical process capital cost is more purchasing the spectrometer spectrophotometer is more but once it is purchased then it is very easy to determine the structure of the molecules so this is the importance of the spectroscopy students so i have explained about the what is the spectroscopy and what are the radiations about which we are talking which are electromagnetic radiations and what is the importance or significance of spectroscopy now moving ahead we are going to discuss about the types of electromagnetic radiations types of electromagnetic radiations so based upon the wavelength or the energy we can we can we can categorize the we can categorize the electromagnetic radiations into following types i based upon either the wavelength or energy so what is the relationship between wavelength and energy students wavelength and energy lambda and energy so we know that e equals to h nu i don't want to emphasize much on e is equal to h nu it is well versed right so e is equal to h nu means e equals to h nu is nothing but c by lambda so based upon this e is in the numerator and lambda is in the denominator based upon this we can say that uh, wavelength is inversely proportional to energy now based upon based upon either the wavelength or the energy we can categorize the electromagnetic radiations into following type students following types now i'm going to write the increasing order of the wavelength this is the increasing order of the wavelength students first gamma ray gamma radiations all these are electromagnetic radiation students what are the electromagnetic radiations already i have explained so gamma radiations which are associated with the 0.01 nanometer it is increasing order of wavelength right now x radiations which is associated with 1 nanometer uv radiations which are associated with uh, 10 to 400 nanometers visible radiations which are associated with uh, 400 to 800 nanometers ir radiations which are associated with uh, 800 to 1 cm 800 nanometers to 1 cm so wavelength is increasing from nanometers it has been increased to centimeters so microwave 1 cm to 100 cm whereas the radio waves uh, the wavelength associated with the wave radio waves is uh, greater than 100 cm greater than 100 cm now this is the increasing order of this is the increasing order of wavelength as we know that uh, wavelength is inversely proportional to energy with the help of e equal to h nu we can say that uh, this is the decreasing order of energy students this is the decreasing order of energy now among uh, these 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 electromagnetic radiation which i have depicted on the board based upon uh, either the wavelength or the energy this uv radiations visible radiations ir radiations microwave radiations these are the radiations which gives the information about uh, the structure of the molecule which gives the information about the structure of the molecule 
since these uv visible ir ir means infrared and microwave radiations will give the information about the molecule the spectroscopy associated with uv visible infrared and microwave radiations is called as molecular spectroscopy molecular spectroscopy and coming to the gamma radiations and x radiations gamma radiations and x radiation whatever and this particular gamma and x radiations will give the information about the structure of the atom so since these are giving the information about the structure of the atom whatever the spectroscopy which is related to the gamma and x electromagnetic radiation is atomic spectroscopy atomic spectroscopy atomic spectroscopy atomic spectroscopy now we have to discuss about uh, how making use of uv visible ir microwave we are going to determine the structure of the molecule and uh, this is not there in the syllabus students if the time permits i will discuss about the atomic spectroscopy now you forget about the, the atomic spectroscopy our focus is on the molecular spectroscopy our focus is on molecular spectroscopy means our focus is only on uv radiation visible radiation ir radiation microwave radiation and one more radiation is there students we cannot ignore this radiation it is very important it doesn't mean that it is not giving the structure of the molecule it will give the structure of the molecule but but the thing is it gives the information about how the hydrogens are attached to the carbon or oxygen or any heteroatom and how many hydrogens are attached to how many hydrogens are attached to the carbon or the heteroatoms so this is the basic introduction to the spectroscopy and in order to understand the further topics in spectroscopy definitely you need the knowledge of all these terms which i have explained today right so before watching the next video which is which will be made in a couple of days definitely do watch this video so if you are not watching this video and if you watch the next video so definitely i'm damn sure that it will become the nightmare for you no doubt in that so i hope you understood this video students so with the help of these basics let us discuss let us discuss uh, what exactly is the spectroscopy and how many types of spectroscopies are there and how the spectroscopy is helpful for determining the structure of the molecule how the spectroscopy is helpful to elucidate the structure of the molecules so thanks for watching students thank you